Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamertguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to make money. No, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I am trying to design a bill that looks like a real life currency. To create this level of detail, I'm going to use basic shapes, symbols, compound groups and tapered strokes. I took some of the elements from the first test and reused them in this design. I'm working with global colors to make it easier to change the colors should the need arise. I start with some basic rectangles, fill them with the global color, add transparency and set the blend mode to multiply. This will give me richer colors and nicer mixes when the colors overlap. I start placing the text elements, sticking to the initial design I had for the 100 smiles bill with the number and the text in the top left and right corners, the country of origin, the lands of Oz on the left side and the serial number and signature in the bottom. I want to create a nice background for the smiley face. For now, I'm just using a circle and adjust the colors of the different strokes. Rather than using the color picker, I use the swatches. That way, I make sure that the color I use is my global color. The color picker will pick a RGB or CMYK value rather than the global color. I base the background shape on a polygon, add more sides, convert it to curves and then use the corner tool to round the corners. Once set to rounded corners, I can change the style, in this case to concave and adjust them taking the circle away i now have a nice shape that i duplicate add the contour and add a stroke rather than a fill duplicate this one increase the contour and thinen the stroke this is a fast way to create multiple outlines on an object A quick way to add more detail is by using a repeating pattern. I create a rounded square, add two ellipses, duplicate them, rotate them and combine all of them with the boolean XOR and it creates an intricate pattern with nearly no effort. I duplicate that and align it to the strip on the left hand side. The next element will be the flowing lines. Before I do that, I move all my colored shapes inside the rectangle. That way the lines can go in there as well and overlap the border being clipped inside the clipping mask. Only the visible parts will show. A finished designer has no blend or morph function yet. So rather than morph, I use the symbol. I create a curved line, turn it into a symbol, duplicate, move and rotate it slightly and the power duplicate does the rest. I adjust the transparency and as soon as I add a second line, the pattern will become a lot more complex. I can modify the curve and play with that to create the level of complexity I'm after. A third line on top of that makes it even more intricate. With just three lines inside a symbol that I duplicated a few times, I can create the complex look I'm after. Using rotation for my symbols, I created rounded shapes. I adjust my squares to match that and create a second pattern again using a line with a stroke that I turn into a symbol. I skew it and move it and again the power duplicate does the magic. It will repeat the effect and I get a nice pattern that I can place inside the shapes at the bottom. 
not using a darker but a lighter stroke for these clip them inside so they're neatly trimmed with these elements in place the design starts to look more and more like a banknote In the first design I used a map like silhouette in the background of the main design. I quite like the idea so I'm using the pencil tool with the stabilizer to have less notes and make it more editable. I want to create a simplified coastline. I use the pencil tool with a tapered stroke to create the rivers. These need to be converted to curves in order to work as elements for the boolean object I'm going to create. In this case it's going to be a compound so I hold Alt while clicking on the boolean add. I change the setting for the rivers from add to subtract that way they are getting cut out of the compound shape. I add a circle duplicated set one to subtract the other one to add to create some markers on the map. Seeing it's all about detail I add more small shapes to the coastline. Being a little lazy here I just duplicate the existing shapes and modify them slightly. Having used the power duplicate for a rotate and a skew, let's do another one with a scale. I have my rectangle at the top, I duplicate it, make a smaller version, color it lighter, duplicate it, scale it slightly and move it. The power duplicate makes it a nice pattern. I reverse the process, scale the shape down and move it over and I have my bar at the top with an interesting pattern. Looking at the lines created with the symbols, I want to bring that circle out a little bit more. I create a circle with a dark orange stroke, duplicate it, scale it up, use the power duplicate and create a set of circles. I group these, place them inside the clipping mask and lower the opacity. I add transparency to the group of circles. The transparency, just like the gradient, can be edited. You can add more nodes. Unlike the gradient, it works with the opacity rather than the color. So I set the opacity of the left node so it is still barely visible. I'm not quite happy with the look of the number. I'm going to place the circle pattern inside the number and change the number from multiply to normal. Otherwise, the white would not be visible. The next design element I'm adding will be using tapered strokes. I love to play with the pressure curve, so I'm going to make a wreath setting a circle to just a segment of the circle with a tapered stroke. I group it, set the opacity for the group to be slightly lower so you can see the lines below. And then I create a line with a leaf shape pressure curve. I use that with the power duplicate, scale it and rotate it. It still takes some tweaking, but it's definitely faster than creating each leaf. It is a quick way to create the pattern. I move the leaves inside the group, duplicate one and create the leaves on the other side, again using the power duplicate. It can take a little bit of tweaking to get the look right. With the pressure curve, the curve, the widths and the angles of the note handles make a difference. If you have not played around with pressure curves, I would suggest watching one of the videos I recorded earlier. It's a lot of fun. I'm quite happy with the design now. I duplicate all the lines for the leaves and set them to erase. 
and give them a slightly different pressure curve with a thinner stroke to have the cut out center of the leaves. The next element will use the cog tool, one of my favorites. It is very versatile. You can do a lot of things from a starburst to the face of a compass or a clock. I want to create a simple sun design by adjusting the various nodes that are available. And with a few clicks and two duplicates in different colors, I have the bottom corner covered as well. It's starting to look more and more like a banknote. A feature I forgot to add are the braille numbers. I should have added them somewhere, but simply forgot. The main element is something I created earlier. It's a flower shape made of symbols, two half circles in the center, filled with a simple pattern and a ring of symbols around it with a second symbol for the outer leaf. It's a pretty simple, straightforward design. I did not record the creation of that one. If you're interested in the creation of a flower like this, I recorded a video a while back on flower design using symbols. You might want to check that one out. The petals consist of a deformed circle used as a base for a compound shape with tapered lines converted to curves inside for the additional detail. I'm not happy with the map shape below, so I'm moving that a little bit over to show more of the flower and then extend the curved rectangle. The nice thing about curved corners is they stay intact when you alter the size of the shape, which can be a problem when you want to scale the corner with the design. You'd have to bake the appearance or convert to curves prior. There are still some minor things to fix. I'm not happy with the placement of some of the markers, so I adjust those. But overall, that's the design done. I used a lot of tools, a lot of techniques I've used in earlier tutorials. Among other things, I used basic shapes, symbols, compound groups, tapered strokes and all that mixed together to create something that looks very complex but broken down to its basic parts is rather simple. I really enjoyed the creation of these two banknotes. The project was something that brought together a lot of tutorials, including some of my favorites, the symbols, the compound objects and tapered strokes. As always, it's all about having fun creating something new. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon, leave a like and let me know what you want to see on my channel or in my blog and I will see you again soon.